Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of August. Now before we take a look at the energies for this month and the news matchup, I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers to this channel. Welcome. And I thought I'd also let you know if you are new to Sidereal Vedic Astrology, then in the description below you will find a link to a Vedic chart calculator. You will be able to take a look at your signs. They are likely to be slightly different to your Western astrology signs. So I thought I would just let you know. There are also jump links in the description below so you can jump around in this content and watch the bits that you would like to see. So what kind of energy do we have for the month of August? Well firstly what kind of energy do we have right now? And I am recording this guys on the 18th of July and I just want to make mention briefly that yes we have had some big news in our world recently haven't we? Uh, the first which is Julian Assange uh, has now I'm going to phrase it the same way that the ABC News has done they've got a headline here Julian Assange's 14 year long saga yeah because we, I, I don't know if we can technically call it imprisonment because it was a five year imprisonment anyway I will cover that not this month but I'll probably cover that the month after because I am recording this 18th of July we've had some pretty big news come out of the United States of America I will take a look at that in the news matchup so those of you who want to stick around for that um, some people might be concerned that is the energy for this month is it you know am I changing my mind am I going to say something different no I, I stand by what I said for the July report this is still a quiet month I know we've had big news uh, there on the 13th of July I know but Mars is still lauded by Venus guys for this month so everything I said in the July report still stands it's not such a crazy month. I know that there are a lot of headlines flying around on YouTube and there's a lot of clickbait and there's a lot of all this kind of thing but I do think for the majority of people uh, you know Mars is lauded by Venus. Venus is moving through Cancer. It is pretty quiet still and if you have a look at what happened there in America on the 13th you know um, yeah, yeah it, it was quite the shake-up I, I do realize that and Mars was very close to Uranus and it was a sudden event but the way that it's been handled everything calmed down very quickly you know and things are okay so this month is going to continue to be fine again if we have a look at the energies for this month and that's what I just want to touch on briefly here uh, energies for this month yeah we've, we're going to have Mercury in retrograde that's from 5th August to 29th August in Leo. So that's a Mercury retrograde in Leo the Kingdom. So people are going to be reviewing their plans, reviewing their leadership, reviewing how they go forward. You know, when, when we take a look at what's happening uh, on the world stage there, there are going to be people who are seriously reviewing their leadership and how they run things and all that kind of thing so we can see that Mercury retrograde in Leo. Venus is also going to transit through Leo from the 31st of July to the 25th of August. That's a really nice energy to have passing through Leo. It's really good. The Sun is also going to be there. Sun uh, 17th August to 16th September we're going to have the Sun moving through Leo. So the focus is very much on leadership, on kings, kingdom, plans, revising plans, doing things differently. I mean you know we can see that coming up here as the planets move through Leo in August. I've got here all focus will be on Leo, the king, the kingdom. So that is the kind of energy that we are dealing with across this month. Uh, so as you can see I don't have too much to say about the energy for this month. Um, 
Well, let's get into the news matchup. So I touched briefly on Julian Assange, but I won't talk about the astrology for him just yet because I really want to sit with his chart and look at it in a lot more depth. I managed to have a look a week or two ago, but I have been super busy, guys. I've been super busy with client readings. I've been super busy with my Patreon classes and all the work that I'm doing. It's I'm super stacked. So I haven't had time to look at the chart of Julian Assange. Last night, I did take a look at Donald Trump's chart. We're going to take a look at that now together. Uh, and I wanted to have a look at, now I've got here famous past assassinations because I wanted to see, all right, what is the energy, the astrological energy, say, for example, of an assassination? Is there a pattern that I can detect? And it is quite interesting what I've discovered here. Uh, I know that on the internet, people have been talking about Mars being conjunct Uranus uh, and those two being conjunct Algol. So I've been looking into that because I actually don't use, now Algol is a fixed sign and I don't use the fixed signs in my work. Uh, and I actually don't use the outer planets in my work either. The other thing is I'm not familiar with how to predict an assassination either. I don't predict that kind of thing. It's not my field. Uh, what I predict is I, I work one on one with individuals and, you know, we look at career and we look at love life and we look at, you know, the things of an everyday life. That is uh, my expertise. That's where I have, you know, many years now of uh, experience doing that. So that is my my work but what I've done is I've pulled up the charts so I'm going to pull up the charts I've got written here I've got Ronald Reagan, Robert F Kennedy, Indira Gandhi, John F Kennedy. Okay now here's an interesting one I've got Princess Diana as well I know it's a bit odd but I'll, I'll explain why and then we're going to take a look at Donald Trump okay and we're going to see what we can see we're going to see are there any patterns here is there anything where I can say for sure there is a pattern because I've been hearing a lot of people saying Algol, Mars and Uranus, those three equals assassination. And I'm like, OK, well, I want to check that out and I want to see what I can see. What pattern can I see? Uh, today I was listening to, well, yesterday I listened to George Galloway interview Garland Nixon and I'm currently watching, I'm halfway through another Garland Nixon interview. He's really quite interesting. I've been enjoying what he's been saying. He's a political analyst. And he mentioned um, a couple of other people that I could be looking up. Let's see, I've got here Martin Luther King, of course, and um, Malcolm X. Now, I haven't looked up their charts. If I had more time, I would. But, you know, after this, I'm probably recording another video and then, you know, I've got client stuff to do and I'm super busy. I just don't have the time, unfortunately. So at least I've got a handful of charts here and we will be able to talk through some of this just to see, all right, what, what is really going on and what can astrology tell us about the recent event of 13 July? Are there any, you know, astrological signatures and and, and things that we can see and reliably say, um, you know, and, and you get to see my thought process and how I would go about looking at this thing astrologically. So let's take a look at the chart of Ronald Reagan. Now, how did I come to Ronald Reagan? Okay, yesterday I was washing the dishes. It was probably about nine o'clock and Joe Rogan came up on my YouTube dashboard. I'm not a Joe Rogan viewer at all. But it was some 15 minute clip that someone else put up and I'd been clicking on these news type things. So I thought, OK, let's see what he has to say. So I clicked on it. And so he showed footage of the Ronald Reagan assassination. And I thought, let's take a look. That, this, that's where I got the idea to look at other people, uh, other assassinations. It was really because of him going through that clip. I thought, hey, yeah, why don't I take a look at that? So the date for that was 30th March 1981. And if we take a look at what's going on here, I can see some things that make sense in terms of that there could be an attack on this man. If you take a look, Jupiter is the Lord of his ascendant. So he's a Sagittarius ascendant. The Lord of that is Jupiter. Jupiter is seated in the sixth house from the moon, sixth house from the moon of enemies, sixth house of enemies. 
Uh, Jupiter is conjunct Saturn there quite closely as well. Both are retrograde. So that's Lord of the physical body is sixth house from the moon, 10th house from his ascendant. So we are dealing with enemies and we are dealing with 10th house of world stage. That is an appropriate term for him, the world stage. He was definitely on the world stage, out and about working, doing his work. We've also got Virgo here. Uh, now Mars is opposite that and to me this does yeah, Mars being opposite the Lord of his physical body, Saturn is there in the house as well. To me, that is the astrological signature. This is the area, um, this, this six from the moon, where we can see, all right, there could be some form of attack and it could be by an enemy and that could be on his physical body. I can see it here. So I can see that, yeah, this, on this date, there could be some form of attack. Let's take a look at Robert F. Kennedy. And I'm not looking at the dashes, by the way. All right, so I'm just purely looking at transits and I want to see what can we see with the transiting planets. Uh, with Robert F. Kennedy, this one was very clear to me. So straight away when we look at his ascendant, we look at the physical body there, ascendant is Aries, and we have a pop card three at play. All right, so we've got Saturn and Rahu, um, 12 from ascendant, and we've got uh, Mars, Mars and Sun, it's quite interesting. Sun was there with Ronald Reagan as well. It's quite strong. Uh, we've got Sun and Mars here. This one is actually kind of interesting when looking at the whole Algol thing. Okay, um, Algol is a fixed star which is 26, I've read somewhere 26 degrees Taurus, I read somewhere else 26 degrees 10 Taurus. So yeah, and this Mars here is, what is that? That is, look at that, that's 26 degrees Taurus. So this one but see there's no Uranus involved or is there I, I wouldn't know how to read aspects of Uranus I don't know if there are uh, but you could possibly read a fifth aspect from Uranus my guess is that's what you would do one two three four five. yeah that is fifth yeah Uranus is there but what I am seeing physical body Mars Saturn pop card three okay so we've got a Mars Saturn here because I don't read Algol and I don't read Uranus but we do have Mars Saturn pop card three physical body and when I was looking this up I was thinking well with Reagan I couldn't see what area of the body was he hit I don't think he was hit either I don't know um, I haven't had time to do all the research fully but I know with Robert F. Kennedy, I looked up, okay, where was he hit, for example, and I thought it would be the head. And um, yeah, it did, in the research, it did say his right ear, which I thought was kind of interesting. And if you look at Mars's position, that is close to Gemini. I read ears and hearing and things like that. Third house Gemini is how I read that. Mars is very close to Gemini. so. Yeah, right ear, definitely. Um, Indira Gandhi, let's take a look at her. Her one is striking. Uh, th this one, yeah, I was, I was pretty amazed by this. If you have a look at her ascendant, her ascendant is Cancer. All right, ascendant, Saturn is there too. Mars is casting eighth aspect into the ascendant. Uh, and Saturn is exalted. And an exalted Saturn is casting tenth aspect into the ascendant so you've got that Mars Saturn hit to the ascendant again okay so we've definitely got that Mars Saturn signature it's hitting the ascendant when I was looking at this I was thinking it must have been because we've got cancer here I was thinking oh gosh it could have been her heart or something like that when I googled and looked it up because I didn't have time to read the Wikipedia page and all that so I just googled where was she hit I didn't like Googling that either, by the way. It's just, oh, this is all terrible. Like, I don't want to be looking at any of this, but I am looking. Um, anyway, it, it said her abdomen, I think, and this being seventh from the moon, uh, yes, seventh from is abdomen for sure. Um, cancer is heart, and it's interesting that on the day when she was assassinated, 
she was not wearing her bulletproof vest. Uh, and if you think about it, that bulletproof vest, which she must have worn a lot, as she was instructed to, that is very cancer the crab, you're protecting the heart. Um, so I thought that whole thing was quite interesting there. Uh, if we take a look at John F. Kennedy, now John F. Kennedy and Princess Diana, so these are the next two that we're going to take a look at. John F. Kennedy, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at his ascendant and I'm looking for, you know, we have a pattern that we've just established from the last three charts. We can see Saturn and Mars energy connecting in with either the ascendant or the Lord of the ascendant, the physical body. We want to see Saturn Mars energy connecting in with that on the day of the hit, for example. So I've got the day of the hit here for what is it, John F. Kennedy. And what do we have? We've got 22nd November 63. I am having a look at the ascendant and I'm not seeing Saturn aspecting. Saturn's only aspecting its ninth aspect, which we don't count. Though there must be some energy, even though, you know, it's not technically a proper aspect. Uh, and then if we have a look at Mars, is Mars aspecting? No, it's not. But then Mercury is the lord of uh, his ascendant physical body. And that's there in Scorpio. Mars is there. The sun is there. But there's really no Saturn connection. So this chart to me shows that I don't think he should have died that day is what I'm seeing. Uh, that's what's coming across to me. And if we have a look at Princess Diana, similarly, now you might think, well, she wasn't assassinated. Well, no, she wasn't. I mean, we don't know. There's so much we don't know. I mean, there, there is a note in her handwriting where she says, you know, my husband is plotting to, to kill me in a car accident, which I believe she gave to a lawyer to look after. She gave it to someone she trusts, and that's how we know about this letter because that lawyer is, I believe, a very prestigious high up lawyer here in England. And so they couldn't touch him and he has the document and he made it public, I think. I think that's how that whole thing worked. Anyway, when we look at her chart and I'm looking for that Saturn Mars signature to the physical body, I'm not seeing it here. Uh, ascendant lauded by Mars, Mars has no connection with, unless of course you count Mars's fourth aspect to her natal um, Saturn, you could do that. But I'm not particularly seeing. The other thing you could look at with Princess Diana is that um, second from the moon and seventh from the moon are lit. These are Marika houses. So, you know, I mean, you, you could see and say things, but to me, it doesn't have the feel of those first three charts, which again, to me sort of says, maybe she shouldn't have died on this day, you know? Um, and in which case I would want to see like the perpetrators charts or the people who are doing the crime kind of thing. I'd, you know, there are other people's charts to look at here as well. Um, so anyway, after looking at all these charts, I thought, let's take a look at Donald Trump. I want to see what happened on the 13th of July. And the Algol connection that people are talking about, I mean, it's kind of there, but it, it's not really because Mars is hardly a degree into Taurus. It's like 46 minutes into Taurus. So it's not really close to 26 degrees 10, but it is very close to Uranus. So there is a sudden event that is taking place. Uh, and look at that. It really is aspecting into the ascendant here, physical body. Saturn's straight opposite, casting a direct aspect into physical body. Right. And it's um, to me, this one was very similar to Indra Gandhi. We take a look at Indra Gandhi again. You'll see that Mars and Jupiter are in the same house, casting aspect into the physical body. 
and Saturn casting 10th aspect in the physical body, Donald Trump. Mars and Jupiter are in the same house. Mars is casting that aspect into physical body, so too is Saturn. So when I saw this, I saw this this morning, and when I made the connection that, wow, his is a very similar situation to Indira Gandhi, yeah, when I saw that today, I was just like, whoa, he really, uh, that this energy is there. Like it's, yeah, he, he could have died. Like this is, um, I mean, you don't need astrology to tell you that obviously but there is a sort of a natural energy here of um, that he he could have he really could have lost his life because I wasn't sure was his chart going to be like those first three where it's very obvious or J.F. Kennedy John F. Kennedy and um, Princess Diana where it's like I'm looking at those two charts going these two people could have lived kind of thing you know, and I remember when I did Princess Diana's Masters episode, I got that feeling as well when I was working with her charts and writing that script and putting all of that together. I remember thinking that she really could have lived. Like I remember getting that strong sense. Uh, whereas when I'm looking at Trump's chart, I'm seeing he really could have completely lost his life. Like this really could have been something fatal. So, yeah, um, the astrology really does confirm uh, that this, this was quite a serious thing. I think the way that, he, he, you know, he handled it exactly the right way. He just minimized it, made it a small thing, because on the world stage at the moment, it, it, it is a small thing. You know, there, there are wars going on. There are people losing their lives. There are horrific things happening, you know, um, Palestinian people, innocent people are losing their lives in the most awful ways. So, you know, I think he handled it well. He minimized it. He made it a small thing. Um, and I think the nation is handling it very well as well, you know, and I, I think people should, uh, well, I think Americans need to have more faith in each other, you know. I think it's just that because yeah I, I um you know it's 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 been an interesting thing to observe and we'll still have a look at more astrological things i did have a look today finally i sat down and i looked at the numerology for donald trump this is a number one year isn't that interesting so this is a one year for him um if we take a look at joe biden it's a three year for him so you know where joe biden's got jupiter and this is an expansion year for joe biden donald trump has the sun donald trump has a number one year and we've just seen with the english election what a number one year can do for a man what it did for keir starmer right it's put him in power uh, a lot of people are saying due to this event and how he has managed to live through it and I do looking at the astrology I'm kind of going wow yeah this is a um, is it is a fatal sort of a thing what happened here but equally I mean people who are questioning the official story I think it's good to question the official story because as we saw with 9-11 you know as I was saying as we saw with 9-11 they gave us an official story of these four guys or, or however many guys it was I'm trying to remember now I'm going back quite a few years to what I remember back then but they said something about these men who trained up on Cessnas or whatever and I, I think I read today I did briefly read something about you know they said they weren't very good students in their flying school I google search quickly the flying school to see do they teach you how to fly a Boeing plane no they don't and I've heard people say that there's no way you could go from flying a Cessna to figuring out how to fly a Boeing plane. It's like you need a computer science degree to operate one of those Boeing aircraft or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, um, we were fed an official story that, you know, as, as, like, as if those four guys could, you know, successfully fly Boeing planes into tall buildings after having studied at that school that they quoted and you know so whatever official story is being given I think it's good to question it because um, 
you know, I, I think that's important. I also think with um, with Trump's chart, like if we look at Indira Gandhi, I mean, the person who took her life was one of her own bodyguards. And it was actually in uh, Wikipedia, it does say, and I know Wikipedia, not the most reliable source, but it does say that that was her most favorite uh, bodyguard. Let me see where it says that. Yeah, she was not wearing her bulletproof vest that day, which she had been advised to wear at all times after Operation Blue Star. Where does it say? It says there's some line here where it says that it was her favorite bodyguard that, that killed her. So look at that, you know, that's pretty terrible. I mean, I can't tell you who did the thing on the 13th. There's, I, I, I can't read that. But uh, what I can tell you is that yeah, I was, kind of, I was kind of looking for, you know, what, what kind of a thing is this? And it, it really, yeah, it really, really could have been fatal. So I think America is, is doing well, actually, despite everything. And, and why, why are things so difficult in America right now? Well, it really is Pluto natal return. Uh, if we just take a look very briefly, so I'll just show you. No, Pluto natal return is on now. It's really the height of it. It's the lead up was even sort of 2023. If we look at that, 2023, Pluto is just coming up to the point. We're on the point now. So this is the toughest it's going to be for America. I think this year and next year are going to be two very difficult years for the United States of America. But I think the years after that, everything's gonna get a lot better, especially 2026 onwards. I think things are going to be a lot better. It's just, you're going through the really tough thing right now. And if we look at something like a Saturn return, which each one, one of us individually goes through every 30 years, okay, this is a Pluto natal return. It's like Saturn return to the power of 10 or something so every 248 years it is 248 isn't it i wrote it down yeah it's 248 years pluto returns so this is a time of upheaval this is a time of um destruction anything that's corrupt and not good it, it anything that won't sustain in the future that we can't take with us into the good future that we're heading into because there's lots and lots of signs of evidence that we're heading into a good future okay if we take a look i do believe that we're in kali yug somewhere i don't know if we're in the beginning or in the end or because kali yug i would imagine would have lots of you know ups and downs and takes thousands of years but we're on some kind of upward trajectory with Kali Yug because here's just a simple fact to prove that the age span of humans is always increasing. We're living longer and longer and longer. So that's just one factor that is indicating that we're, we're evolving um, pretty well, really, you know, and um, yeah, I think we are on some kind of upward trajectory in Kali Yug. Maybe we're getting out of Kali Yug. I'm not sure about that. I don't know how long these things go and I don't know exactly where we are with that. I've watched a lot of different experts say a lot of different things about that. But I really do think the evolution is on an upward good trajectory. And anything that we're going through that is uncomfortable or that is difficult or that is hard it's just some form of clearing. It's that there's a new level of love that's pushing the gunk up to the surface. We're seeing the gunk, we're clearing it away, but what's underneath is actually good energy. And yeah, I really do think that America is going to be fine and is, is, is going to do well. And I have no preference for who runs the country or whatever. I think in the scheme of things, you know, even that probably doesn't matter too much but uh maybe it does i don't know <laughs> i really don't know uh, i you know i'm not these days i'm not really in a voting mood here in the united kingdom i so a lot of you guys in the comments last time i don't know if anyone's still here you've probably all gone off to your mini reports 
But if anyone is still here, thank you for encouraging me to still vote because I had said last time I'm not going to vote. And a lot of you said, no, go and vote, but just put a dummy vote. So I did. I turned up with my, I, I took my passport because I wanted some, I don't know, ID or whatever. And I went there and I got my thing and I had with me, they give you a little pencil and I whipped out my black marker and I made sure I got a little booth where no one could see me. <laughs> I'm talking about it on the internet now, but I did. I did a, I just did a black cross and I folded it and I put it in. And I'm proud to say that because yeah, I just feel like I can't participate in these things anymore. And uh, But I did participate. I, I sort of participated my non-participation or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, I, I'm glad I did that because, um, yeah, because that's, that's a change. That's something new. And, you know, but equally, if you feel strongly that you want to vote for one side or the other, you go ahead and vote for whoever you believe. It's all good. You know, this is... Um, yeah, one should never feel like they can't have an opinion or, you know, and if you want to sit on the fence like me, one should be able to have that opinion and it should all be okay. I think it's all okay, you know, um, but yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I do think, well, we'll follow, we'll keep following the election stuff and see what happens here, but I just wanted to talk about these charts because I kind of got into it and I got really yeah curious about you know how all this works and what's going on and why and we can see that that, uh, that was a that was a real event what took place uh, not to say that you know therefore we shouldn't question the official story no we can still question the official story I think that's healthy too but it was a real thing anyway Let's take a look at the mini reports, shall we? All right, so Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. We're good. Aries, welcome Aries. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Aries Ascendant. Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we're going to have Mercury retrograde from 5th August to 29th August in fifth house Leo. Venus is also going to be there across this time and the Sun will join sort of mid-month time. Mercury lords Ketu. Ketu is transiting your sixth house so things from the past especially in relation to your work could come up at this time. Your creativity and or your children will be in focus at this time now this could translate to higher expenses across this month, but also there could be a lot of fun and good times ahead. This could be a great time for singles to meet someone new. And I've got here, be creative this month, enjoy the romance of the little things, and this will be a lovely month for you. Now on the 4th of August, we have a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your fourth house. So you can plant seeds for a renewal at home, uh, either in your family relationships and or something to do with your living space. You know, and it could even be the time where maybe you redecorate or do something new with your, with your home. Now on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your 11th house. So this is a good time to reflect on how giving you have been with friends and siblings and how you can better give to yourself. You, you're a very generous person, Aries. And Aquarius Danishta Nakshatra, Danishta Nakshatra is wealth. And it's wealth and abundance of all kinds. So it's a good time to reflect, yeah, how you've been so generous and giving and kind to your friends, siblings, people around you, and also how you can give to yourself. You need to look out for you, Aries. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury will be retrograde from 5th August 
to 29th August in fourth house Leo. Venus will be there across this month and the Sun will join from sort of mid-month onwards. Now Mercury Lords Ketu, Ketu is transiting your fifth house so things from the past in relation to your children or in relation to creativity can come up. Now something at home might require repair, could need to be replaced or fixed at this time. Equally this could be a time where you spend more money on your house or your car or comforts in general. Your relationship with your mother could be more in focus across this month and also you might work from home more this month as well. This is really good energies available for students, for skilling up, for relearning something. This is good for concentration. So there is some, some nice energy here for you Taurus. On the 4th of August we have a new moon in Cancer Ashleisha Nakshatra. This is happening in your third house. So you could plant seeds to renew your friendships or to meet more soul tribe people as well. And on the 19th of August we have a full moon in Aquarius, Tanishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your 10th house. So this is a good time to reflect on how giving you have been through your career or through what you do in the world. And this is also a time to see how you can invest your own energy back into yourself. And that could be uh, just recently actually one of my clients he signed up to a course that he really wanted to do and that was his way of you know investing in himself. So yeah it might be I don't know maybe, maybe a course that you pick up something like that. Taurus it is looking like a good month ahead. Thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury will be retrograde from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in third house Leo. Venus is going to be there which is great. Sun will join mid-month onwards and Mercury interestingly Lords Ketu, Ketu is transiting your fourth house. So something from the past could come up in relation to your home or in relation to your mother or how you nurture yourself. So something at work could require more attention this month. You might even have to redo something or you could find yourself tackling an old situation with a friend or you might feel as though you are having the same conversation again. But if you aren't dealing with some old situation this is a really positive month for you. It's actually a lovely month, it's a social month. So if you're able to socialize, get out with friends uh, or even just get away, a little short day trip somewhere or just change the energy and you know I, I had this friend um, she lived on her own and this was when I was yeah I was still at home in Sydney myself and I didn't know what it was like to live on your own and she said to me because I don't know did I know I was going to London then I think I did anyway she told me somehow she knew I'd live on my own for a time and she said when you are living by yourself she said you will need to know where the people are and I didn't know what that meant and then when I moved to London for the first time and I was on my own for quite a long time I was like oh I know what she's talking about like you just yeah sometimes you just want to go and be around people not necessarily hang out with friends but you just want to be somewhere where there are people I actually I totally get that so yeah you might be doing that Gemini this month you might just want to go somewhere where there's people around and in human design they talk about some types actually you actually need other people to walk past your aura to shift the energy it's just good for you it's like there's a thing yeah 
Okay, uh, 4th of August, new moon, Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your second house. Oh, this is a good new moon. You can plant seeds for big money, big wealth. Uh, you can plant seeds for your savings to grow, for abundance to accumulate, all that kind of thing. And then on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Tanisha Nakshatra, happening in your ninth house. So this is a good time to reflect on what you now know to be true. What do you now know to be true, right? This is something that you would have learned over time. And I've got here, you can reflect on how you now know so much more than you knew five years ago or than you knew 10 years ago or 20 years ago. It's, it's, it's good to reflect now and then and just to see how we're doing. It can be quite motivating when we see that we've already made a lot of progress. That in itself can motivate us to keep going. Gemini, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury is going to be retrograde and that is from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in second house Leo. Now Venus is going to be there, so that's great energy. Sun is going to join mid-month onwards and Mercury lords Ketu and Ketu is transiting your third house. So some old thing relating to friends or siblings could come up at this time. Now this is a good month to review your finances or get on top of admin relating to your assets, your home or your wealth, any of that. It's also a good time to speak up on things that are important to you. This can be to do with family of origin or childhood connections. There's creativity, there's sensitivity here, and there's authority in the way that you speak this month. So that is really good. Another thing I've just thought about, sun going through the second, it could also be expenses are higher this month. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now on the 4th of August, there is a new moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So this is your new moon, Cancer, and you can plant seeds for the life of your dreams. You know, and it's quite interesting how over time our dreams and desires do change. And I always find that really interesting with myself, like the things that I used to want before, uh, some of those things I'm really glad they didn't pan out because if they did, my life would be completely different. So this could also be cancer for you, a time of gratitude for the dreams that didn't pan out. That's interesting. I didn't particularly have that on my notes, but someone might need that. It's just popped into my mind. Uh, now on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Danisha Nakshatra happening in your eighth house. So this is a really good time to reflect on how you are honing your intuition. You might be especially intuitive at this time as well. We've got a big, bright, full moon. So uh, and Aquarians can be quite intuitive. So we've got a full moon at this time, 19th August. You might also gain insights into your family or in-laws. If there's some hidden dynamic or something that's a bit hidden, hidden feelings with family or something like that, you might gain some insights there on the 19th of August. But otherwise, it's looking like a pretty good month for you, Cancer. Thank you for joining and we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm checking the time. We're okay. We have got a Mercury retrograde, guys, and that is happening from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in first house Leo. This is happening in your sign, Leo. This is big. Venus is going to be there. The sun is also going to transit through this area. That's from mid-month onwards. And Mercury lords Ketu. Ketu is transiting your second house. So some old thing relating to your family of origin might come up at this time. You might also be reviewing major life plans across this month. You could be reviewing your finances, your investments, as Mercury lords the second and eleventh houses for you. Yeah, so this could be a bit of a financial 
thing where you're reviewing finances. Could also be a time of reviewing relationships, either at work or with siblings or friends who are like siblings. Now, if you feel tired or drained at any point, definitely take time to rest. Don't overdo it. Don't overburn. You've got the sun passing through here. So yeah, you might want to take it easy. And I've got here, make time for creativity or art or fun if you can. Really, really important. Now on the 4th of August, we have a new moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your 12th house. So you can plant seeds for your intuitive powers to be enhanced. And on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Dhanishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So this is a really good time to reflect on the relationship you have with your committed partner, the person you're married to, your business partner. Or this is just a good time to reflect on the state of your heart if you are single. It could be a good time to share your feelings with someone as well. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, Leo. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury is going to be retrograde from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in 12th house Leo. Venus is also going to be there. The Sun is going to join mid-month onwards. And Mercury lords Ketu. Ketu is transiting your first house. So something from the past can come up this month. Now you might gain extra insights this month from the team you work with behind the veil. Now, you know, a lot of my audience, I think we're all on board with this. I, I know I've got guides and angels and yeah, beings, beings on that other side of that veil and they help me a lot. So you might gain extra insights uh, this month from your team that you work with behind the veil. I've got here, though it might be harder to sleep this month at times, See if you can work with your dream state to reveal new insights and ideas to you. And I've heard this tip. If you do find that you're not getting peaceful or restful sleep, you might be, you know, doing some kind of energy work in your dream state. So what you can do before you sleep, just ask your guides or your team, just say, look, could I have a recharging, healing, restful night tonight? I don't want to do any work tonight. And you might find that you wake up a lot more refreshed in the morning. I've got here, it's a good time for creativity, for working with your imagination. It's a really good time to make time to escape from the daily grind this month. Yeah, you've got some nice energy here. Even if work is demanding, you might be able to carve out little bits of time here and there. Like when I look back at my week this week, I've had no time to carve out, to disappear to the park or do something healthy like that. I've just been at my desk the whole week. But um, you might find across the month of August, some time, bits of time just naturally open up and you can just have a walk, go to the park, do something different, just have little escape times, little bits where you, it's really healthy it's really good when you're able to do that. Or just bits of time to meditate, uh, you know, do your own thing. So on the 4th of August, we have a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your 11th house. So you can plant seeds to meet more like-minded soul tribe type of friends and connections. It's a good time for networking uh, or just, well, just to plant the seeds. Let the universe do it. Let the universe bring them in. You don't have to do anything here. It's the 4th of August. It's a new moon. So plant those seeds. And then on the 19th of August, we have a full moon. That's in Aquarius, Dhanishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So this is a really good time to reflect on work, on what you do for a living. And I've got here, you give so much to your work, to your clients, and... Are you getting, what are you getting back from your work? Maybe you're assessing that at this time. 
can you and I've got here can you also give your best energy to yourself too or can you work out changes you can make at work so that so that you're energetically being fed as well it's really important that it's not just a one-way thing but that somehow your work feeds back into you I think that's the thing to see if you can reflect on here with that 19th of August full moon but other than that it's really nice energy Virgo it's really spiritual energy you've got here this month where you can really gain new insights new ideas probably you know uh, get some good downloads across across this month thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Libra ascendant Libra moon or Libra sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Mercury will be retrograde from 5th August to 29th August in 11th house Leo Venus is also going to be there the Sun will join mid-month onwards and we've got Mercury lording Ketu Ketu is transiting your 12th house so some insights from beyond the veil could turn up at this time you could even get information from a past life or a past life experience might connect at this time or something from a past life might make sense I've got here you have wonderful energy with this retrograde you certainly do because they're all passing through 11th house beautiful this is great energy Libra I think you've got perhaps possibly the best month uh, this month so we've got Venus and Sun being in the 11th as well I've got here this is great energy for socializing for meeting new friends for creativity for speaking up for being seen for being understood for being recognized you know this is also the house of awards and things like that being rewarded awards I've got here you can win new business meet new people expand and grow in some way it's a really lovely winning month for you now we've got the 4th of August new moon cancer Ashleshya nakshatra this is happening in your 10th house so you can plant seeds to succeed at work or that the next step opens up to you or that you are shown how to get to the next step in your career it's like you're ready you're saying you're planting seeds saying to the universe I'm ready for more show me what's next and on the 19th of August we have a full moon in Aquarius Dhanisha nakshatra this is happening in your fifth house so this is a really good time to reflect on how giving you are uh, this could also be a romantic full moon where you share your feelings with someone and I did check this one out in a bit more detail Libra your full moon um, Saturn is there so this is someone like if you're going to be if this is a romantic full moon where you're sharing your feelings with someone this is something perhaps that's been going on for a while or there's quite some commitment here this isn't just a new thing kind of is what it feels like uh, now if it's not any of that the 19th of August full moon could just be uh, creativity enhanced creativity or time with your children more time with your children more time to have fun with them Libra it's a really nice month for you I hope you enjoy it you can let me know how it goes as well we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Mercury will be retrograde from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in 10th house Leo Venus is going to be there which is lovely and the Sun is going to join well Venus is there in the 10th and that's lovely for career it's not so good for love but that's okay uh, the Sun will join mid month onwards and the Sun being there is great energy We've got him Mercury Lords K through transiting your 11th house so an old issue with a friend or a sibling can come up at this time and this retrograde might require you to be more meticulous at work or even to redo something at work or review something at work or some old thing comes back onto your desk and you have to deal with it again Sun in the 10th is very strong 
So this is actually a really good time to speak up at work. It's a good time to present your ideas. You will be speaking with authority at this time. Now creativity is strong in your chart at this time. I've got here, so don't be afraid to present new things now that you might launch later. I know with retrograde energy, it's sometimes not the best time to be launching something new, but this could be a kind of thing where you are getting ready in advance and maybe you're just trying something out or this could even be something a bit experimental but you do have energy here to be presenting new things now that you might launch later on the 4th of august we have a new moon in cancer ashlesha nakshatra this is happening in your ninth house so you can plant seeds to learn new things that will help you achieve more in the future this could be maybe you're taking a video editing course or you're learning Spanish or whatever it is, uh, whatever it is that you would like to learn. You can plant seeds that the time and the funds be there for you to be able to do that. And on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Dhanisha Nakshatra, Nakshatra. I just tripped over the Nishta Nakshatra. That is, say that 10 times really quickly. I don't know if I could do that. Uh, 19th of August, full moon, Aquarius, Danishta, fourth house. So what's this for you? This is a good time to reflect on your living space and your home life. You know, how do you like it? Insights might occur to you regarding what changes you'd like to make in the future. And what's really good here is to notice how your desires for where you want to live has changed over time. When I look back as to, especially these last few years, a lot of us have wanted to change where we live. And I remember when I got back to England in 2023, everything felt different. This whole city felt different to me. And I was like, oh, I don't think I, I don't know if I fit here anymore. I don't know if I want to live here. And oh, I want to move and all this. Anyway, I'm so glad that that, that wave of emotion has passed because I'm just so happy here. I don't want to be anywhere else. Like, yeah, it's interesting how, and then I remember when the pandemic first hit and I was thinking, oh no, what if I can't, you know, live in England at all and maybe I need to move back to Australia and all this kind of thing. Anyway, the point is we go through all these emotions and feelings and that's why we've got a full moon here and you've got the fourth house. So you must have some feelings about where you live. And it's just interesting to observe, like I'm grateful to the universe for just keeping me here and for having taken me to Australia across the pandemic time. I did need to go home for that. Um, and I could see in my chart why. But like, yeah, I'm glad that, um, you know, this could, this could be a time where you reflect on your emotions regarding where you live and how actually probably where you are is really a brilliant place to be. Um, yeah, no matter where that is in the world. Because also people often think, oh, I need to change country or I need to move country. No, that, that isn't it either because it's like, um, there's light and dark everywhere. Yeah, it's, there's good and bad everywhere. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. But when, when all the emotions clear out, then it's like you can be real with the place where you are. I don't know, this little spiel might have been helpful to someone out there. Someone might be considering moving. But yeah, you're probably in a brilliant place where you are. Who knows? I mean, I, the universe is pretty good. And our guides are pretty good, you know? Uh, yeah. All right, well, Scorpio, Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury is going to be retrograde. This is the big news and that's from 5th August to 29th August in 9th house Leo. So Venus is going to be there, which is great. Uh, Sun will join mid-month onwards. And Mercury, Lord's Ketu, transiting your 10th house. So an old issue at work could come up uh, or some past thing connected with work could come up across this month. Now this retrograde might require more precision at work or in your studies. 
you might be going over old lessons this month. And let's not forget, for you now, you've got Saturn retrograde in the sixth house of work. And Saturn retrograde, I said, is about correcting past mistakes. So I've got here, if there's something you need to relearn, you're going to relearn it once and for all. Okay, we've got two retrogrades here. So you're definitely going to learn some lessons here. I've got here, be careful of conflicts with authority or on the topic of authority this month. I've got here, be careful not to get into political arguments. Okay, that is a pretty big one for most people around the world at this time. Um, there's someone I know, she was telling me that she can't talk about politics with her brother. And she said, so she just doesn't. And I said, well, you've made the enlightened choice. You know, you've <laughs> assessed the situation. You're like, well, can't talk about that topic with him. So I don't. There we go. That's how we evolve, one person at a time, you know, and sometimes we're speaking up, sometimes we're choosing not to say anything. So yeah, it could be that you're choosing to withdraw or not say anything if that's the right thing, you'll know. I've got here, keep your energies light and creative. And if your aim is to be a good student this month, it'll be a great month for you. Now we've got 4th of August, there's a new moon, Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your eighth house. So you can plant seeds so that your intuitive powers open up or maybe some new occult gifts open up for you. You can wish for that. On the 19th of August, there is a full moon in Aquarius Danish Nakshatra. This is happening in your third house. So it's a good time to reflect on your friends. It could be a time where you open up and share your feelings with someone. Sagittarius, it is looking like a good month ahead for you. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury will be retrograde from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in 8th house Leo. Venus will also be there. The Sun will join mid-month onwards. And Mercury Lords Ketu, Ketu is transiting your ninth house. So an old authority conflict could come up uh, this month or some kind of power conflict or authority, something like that. This is also a good time to review your finances or shared assets. And if you are dependent on anything or anyone at this time, you might learn the lessons around this dynamic. And you'll be able to change things going forward so that it's better for everyone. We've got here, you might be inspired to create more independence for yourself. Um, you will find creative solutions and ideas to make this happen. And I've got here, these ideas could be things you'll execute in the future, but it's just good to be planning and thinking about these things now. On the 4th of August, we have a new moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So you can plant seeds for a healing in your marriage or with your partner or for a partner if you are single. And on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Tanishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your second house. So this is a good time to reflect on how fortunate you are. A great moon for deep gratitude. Absolutely. Capricorn. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Mercury will be retrograde from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in 7th house Leo. Venus is going to be there. The Sun will join mid-month onwards. And Mercury Lords Ketu, Ketu is transiting your eighth house. So an old family issue could come up at this time. Now I will say this is not the best month for love life this month, but love life will pick up from the end of the month onwards. Okay. So it's just a little bit more to go. I've got here. It is a good time to review your money or your finances, especially if you are self-employed. And with the sun transiting through Leo mid-month onwards, you will be able to speak up with empathy, 
with kindness and with authority on matters that are important to you. And yeah, as I mentioned, Love Life will pick up from the end of the month onwards. Now on the 4th of August, we have a new moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So you can plant seeds for the next steps in career to materialize. You are definitely ready for new things. So wish for the new things to be shown to you. And on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Dhanisha Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So it's a good time to reflect on all of the abundance in your life from the material to the spiritual. Okay, there will be a lot of abundance that you have accumulated and there is a lot more to come, Aquarius. Aquarius, you are that container where all the good things are going to come in. So expect a lot more. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have Mercury retrograde Pisces and that is happening from the 5th of August to the 29th of August in 6th house Leo. Now Venus is going to be there. Sun will join mid-month onwards. A Mercury Lord's Ketu Ketu is transiting your 7th house. So an old issue from your love life could resurface at this time. Now, similar to Aquarius where I've just been, um, this is not a great month for love for you, but it is a good time to review the projects you are involved with at work. It's a good time to be strategic with your work. It's a good time to polish your work. It's a good time to go over all the fine details, make it perfect. Whatever you are working on, indulge, make it perfect. <laughs> you know, we're always told like, in business, you can never afford to be 100% perfect. There's always 80-20. It's like, just get it out there. You know, that's very entrepreneurial as well. But I, I'm going to say to you, Pisces, indulge. But make it perfect. Take time. Take extra time if you can, uh, if you're able to. I've got here, this isn't the month to launch something new, but you are getting something ready. You are making something really, really good across this month. And I've got here, Love Life will pick up again for you mid-September onwards. It's a little while to go if you're not having a good time with love, but uh, hang in there. You, you've got good love energy coming up this year. Now on the 4th of August, there is a new moon, Cancer, Ashlesha, Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So you can plant seeds for extending your family. If you want to become pregnant or any of that, you can wish for that at this time. Uh, or you can wish for inspiration for your next creative project. There might be some downloads that come through, or some ideas or inspiration. And on the 19th of August, we have a full moon in Aquarius, Dhanishta Nakshatra. This is happening in your 12th house. So this is a really good time to reflect on how much you have grown spiritually over the last few years. And as with the entire collective, there has been so much awakening that is that has happened, that is happening, that continues to happen. I'm observing it all the time. People are uh, rapidly accelerating and people who I thought would never become spiritual are becoming spiritual. They're getting into it. So it's pretty amazing. We've got to celebrate all the, the good progress and development that happens wherever it happens because it is happening all the time. If we're on the lookout for it, then we're going we're gonna to see that. All right, guys. Well, we are just about at the end of this uh, video. The thing is going to flash in a moment. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who watches these reports. Thank you for pressing like and commenting and all the wonderful things that you do. It's very much appreciated. And... I look forward to seeing you next time.